That's the uh, this GF Laser Bull coming at you with another Destiny video. Today we're going to be talking about the new weapon tuning or weapon rebalancing coming to Rise of Iron. So I hope you guys are excited as I am for Rise of Iron. But there is going to be a lot of changes coming into Rise of Iron. Just a quick note before we get started. want to go ahead and let you guys know if you guys find this video enjoyable and informative. Make sure you guys to drop a like. Let's try to reach 200 likes within this video. Also want to remember, remind you guys if you guys are going to need help with uh, your new Rise of Iron raid and the Trials of Osiris that's coming out. Make sure you guys head over to my Twitch channel and to follow me there because we will be helping people out in both areas. So if you guys need help when the new DLC drops, make sure you guys head over to Twitch and join us over there for the fun. So let's go ahead and dive in and talk about this weapon tuning. So we got a lot, a lot of stuff to cover. So we're going to try to knock them out as quickly as we can. We're going to start with uh, exotics. And like I called it, if you've been following my channel, that the Fabian strategy would be getting a buff. It is getting a buff. And what is actually happening? Kills with the weapon now automatically load a portion of the magazine. Increase base range plus 16 and stability plus 44. So the Fabian strategy might be a very, very good weapon uh, weapon to have and weapon to hold uh, in this coming Rise of Iron. And we will see later down the video uh, what more stuff is coming to auto rifles. Next up, we have the Thorn, the one that everybody's waiting for. We have the following things that are going to be going uh, happening. Damage over time, which provides location information and health recovery delay. It's getting a fastest family of hand cannon fire rate and effectively best in class level range with send it. Since we are bringing it back, Thorn of Rise of Iron is what's worth revaluating its place in the weapon ecosystem. What is the Thorn's strengths? It tells you what the strengths are and then what they're going to be doing is to avoid what happened in year one. They decided to remove one of the, the elements from the equation, reduce base range by 25%. So the base range from the thorn is getting reduced by 25%. That means it is getting a nerf. Next up, we have the infamous and the most hated weapon currently right now in in, in Destiny, which is the Universal Remote. And they are going to go ahead and nerf this down to the ground. We have exotic perk range bonus down reduced by 75%. No longer guarantees magazine shotgun range. And they increased the rate of fire, lower damage as a second effect. So they increased how fast it fires, but they decreased the range and the bonus that they had uh, decreased it to 75%. We'll have to wait and see and test this one out to see if it's, if it's still effective as it is now or if it just got nerfed to the ground. Also, if you guys have been following my channel, I also predicted that sidearms would get a maximum boost and buff, and it looks like we are having that happen. We have an increased damage by 8% and an increased magazine size by 3 for the Drex Promise. So for all of you guys that like to play with the Drex Promise, the Drex Promise is getting increased damage and increased magazine size. Next up, we have something that I thought was really weird, what they did. I'm pretty sure they did it in preparation for the new raid, and that is mess around with the Touch of Malice. Now, if you guys remember, the Touch of Malice is an effective weapon because you're able to, you know, that last bullet does damage, but we found a way, guys, to be able to, you know, loop our way around it and still use the weapon outside of the Oryx with Blessing of Light. So what they're going to be doing is the Touch of Malice self-damaged infliction now, is re now removes Blessing of Light, so you will no longer be able to use Blessing of Light with the touch of malice next up we have a weapon that uh, not a lot of people use but you know when it was coming out everybody was super duper hyped about and that is the bowling gemini they went ahead and gave that a buff they added instructed perk high caliber rounds so now it comes with more high caliber rounds next up we have the no time to explain a weapon that people hardly use and they went and they added an intricate perk head seeker so that should be a very interesting weapon to actually test out now that we are, are getting this patch now for the nice juicy information and sad sad day for all of you snipers you guys are going to have to learn to use another sniper and to let go of the beloved 1000 yards there longbow and ldr so a lot of interesting stuff happening here and uh, we're going to see what uh, you know what i want to know from you guys before we go through this after i'm done what do you guys think if you guys are snipers what do you guys think of this mm -hmm. uh i would say nerf that's coming to your sniper rifle so they kind of broke down what the advantages um, and the benefits of actually using a thousand yard stare and a longbow. But to go down and break down to the nitty gritty, this is what's happening and what is getting nerfed when it comes to sniper rifles. They reduce the damage of a mid high impact sniper rifle like the thousand yard stare, uh, it reduced by 6.9%. So no longer will the sniper rifle 
be able to be as effective when killing someone in their super. So for example, if someone self reses and you have a thousand yards there, if they have max armor, uh, you will no longer be able to actually knock them off their super. So that makes it quite interesting. Uh, the mid-high impact snipers can no longer reliably kill high armor guardians and super. That's what we covered. Then we have the no line beyond is not affected by the damage reduction. So there you have it. They went ahead and the LDR, LDR and the Longbow are known for having a high aim assist. Well guys, sad to let you guys know, that is being reduced and they're bringing it down the line with all the other snipers. So no longer will the LDR or the Longbow have that you know high aim assist. So you're probably going to want to have to find another weapon that's going to be uh, effective for you when it comes to using a sniper. So 1000 yards there. LDR 500 and Lombo might live to see the day or might live to see the death when Rise of Iron comes out. So as a result of all of this, the slowest firing family of sniper rifles similar to the Black Spindle should be your key tool to take down supers uh, balanced by lower magazine size, fire rate, and aim assist. So we're going to have to be looking for low, fire, low firing uh, sniper rifles. Then they went ahead and fixed something that I've been asking for and I was upset when it happened when they took it away which was flinch. Now flinch is actually going to be getting a buff with these changes. They want to give your primary uh, weapon a better chance to uh, to be able to contest against a sniper rifle. Sniper rifle they increase the starting strength for aim deflection aka flinch when a player takes damage while scoped in. Uh, he will start flinching at, uh, usually it would start um, at 30%, now it's moving up to 50%. Uh, with every suitable hit, the strength of the deflection increases until you hit 100 max deflection. So pretty much the more you hit the person, the more flinch they will get, making it very hard to snipe or aim down scope. All sniper a a ADS aim deflection multiplier is increased by 1.9 from 1.85. They also went ahead and did a overall in general fix of the whole uh, archetype of auto rifles. What they did is that the following mid rate fire uh, mid rate of fire autos also received a small damage boost to help with damage fallout, but the resultant damage does not drastically change its time of kill. They reduced the magazine size for all high rate fire rifles in the same family, the Dark and Passing. So I believe it's 66 the amount of uh, the magazine you're able to hold. They went ahead and reduced it. They didn't give a percentile of what it was reduced to, but I'm thinking something along the lines of maybe like in the 50s. Uh, they increased the damage to mid rate fire auto rifles. So we should see a, a kind of like a, a surge when it comes to auto rifles making their way back into the crucible. As far as the shotguns are concerned, they did the following. They said, while well, strong, strong against com com combatants, fast firing shotguns have generally experienced low uptime in PvP. So they want to go ahead and make it so where you have a more of a higher rate of fire uh, shotgun giving you a little bit more of the advantage. So I don't know how this is going to play, but what they did is they reduced the spread angle penalty on a shotgun with the full perk uh, full auto and invective was not affected by this issue they also increased the high rate of fire and mid low rate of fire shotgun damage by two percent so that was pretty interesting another thing they want to go ahead and did the obvious decreased spread of the titan class shotgun in in ads they increased that by 0.1 percent the suit factor was increased they also increased the base stability by 60 percent Next up, we have the Pulse Rifles, and what the Pulse Rifles got, they got an increased rate of fire for the Hockey Pulse Rifle Lumina, uh, Lumina D, and uh, that one got an increase, and then they also did a minor increase of 2% to damage for mid-rate fire family Pulse Rifles, kind of like the Norwin's Mercy, which is a very effective Pulse Rifle. I actually like that one, but it, I like, I'm, I'm happy to see what that 2% and how effective that 2% will be within that Pulse Rifle. Now, like I said, guys, if you guys have been keeping up to my channel, I said sidearms would be getting a buff, and here is what they are getting when Rise of Iron comes out. So, un an undefined damage for all, side all sidearm types, increased damage for existing hockey sidearms family by 3% for a low rate of fire, and 7% for high rate of fire. They decreased the damage for non-hit scan sidearms by 5%, similar to the Vestian Dynasty and the Queen's, Queen's Choice. They did a minor extension of damage fallout points for sidearms across the board plus 0.5 meters. They did ahead and did a minor increase of stability for sidearms across the board. Added damage bonus in PVE from 20 to 30 to 20 from 20% to 30% depending on the combatant's tier. 
Then they went ahead and go ahead. They um, they went ahead and changed the way it looks and accommodated two new fast firing Saturn families related to in Rise of Iron. All current Saturn rate of fire bars will be slightly shorter. So in other words, the Saturns had are going to be re getting reduced within the bait the bar of the uh, fire rate because there's going to be new Saturns that are coming in Rise of Iron that are going to be in a different family type of a fire hazard fire firing rate sidearm. This uh, this is so we can have more bar space to display rate of fire differently when Rise of Iron comes out. And this does not change the actual fire rate, just the stat bar is going to be shortened. Then they went ahead and played around with rocket launchers, which I'm still trying to figure out why. Uh, they increased the effective range of the explosives, explosions from the cluster bombs, and they went ahead and did a uh, kind of... They reduced the radius of grenade and horseshoes by from one point from one to from one point three to one meter, and the truth is not affected by any of these changes. The machine guns seem to be making a rise because they increase the damage on its highest rate of fire right machine guns to four percent. Now hand cannons are going to be the thing to go, I believe, because we are getting and we're not getting any ma major changes with hand cannons. The only major changes that we're having is higher maximum. Uh, stats so the higher fight rate of uh, uh, pretty much hand cannon that you have uh, they're gonna go ahead and uh, give you guys a little bit of a buff when it comes to that choice then they just did a couple bug, bug fixes when it came to hand cannons then we have fusion rifles accelerated recoils uh, reflect damage reduction now on the UI bar and no changes to gameplay will affect the UI and they just fixed uh, issues with the stats bars uh, you know displaying in the fusion rifles then uh, we go ahead and they went also covered a few perks that are going to be getting buffed and nerfed. For example, take a knee now activates after 0.5 seconds of crouching, adding flinch reduction to 25% and increases aim down sight speed by 25%. Exhume added a, for the following uh, perk. Exhume added an extra 5 seconds uh, to 15 seconds total of effect time. Then cascade function changes mainly kills automatically with all the portions of your magazine. Surplus now increases the carry ammo capacity. Grave Robber increases uh, increased activation change to 25 from 20. Gorilla Fighter increased stability and range bonus by 200%. Think of it as a bonus hammer forged and perfect balance when the perk is activated. So that makes it really interesting. And then you have Magazine Perk. Magazine Perk now gives range bonus. Removed impact stat, bo uh, stat bonus. That had no effect on the base damage and only on the UI. Armor piercing rounds add plus five range and reduces negative four handling. High caliber rounds adds three range and reduces five handling. Skip round adds five range, reduces handling and adds five inventory. Then they went ahead and did something to unflinching, decrease the effect of the perk from 25 flinch reduction to 15%. So if you guys are going to be running a sniper, you're definitely going to want to have unflinching on your on your sniper then one thing that they did fix is if you guys remember when you used to get the firefly effect your game would crash well they went ahead and fixed that and then that is what we have guys for the full weapon list and weapon tuning this time around so just to sum it up we have a nerf for the sniper nerf for the thorn a little buff for the sidearm buff for the auto rifles buff for the pulse rifles and, and a nice little perk for the um, hand cannons and it's pretty much everything I predicted that they, they went ahead and did. But let me know in the comment section down below what are you guys mostly happy about and what are you guys mostly upset about. And if you had to make a change, what change would that be? Please let me know all that in the comment section down below. And also guys, don't forget if you found this informative and helpful, make sure you guys drop a like and a comment. And I will catch you guys on the next video.